Hello everyone, it's Katie from So Old Fashioned and you need to brace yourself because it's time we talked about Christmas. Yep, that's right, it's the end of September so clearly we need to start thinking about our Christmas presents. In fact, we probably should have started thinking about them last month. But I didn't, and I'm betting most of you haven't as well. I have five things that I'm going to recommend. Um, not ten. I don't know why both of my hands got in on that one. Five things I'm going to recommend. And this is as part of my Sustainable Semstress series because everything I'm recommending can be made out of scraps. But most importantly, they're presents that are useful. So as, as much fun as it is to make something sort of nice, it's a bit cute, but has no real purpose. I just think it's a much better idea to make something that is going to be useful to the person who's going to receive it, and that way they won't throw it out or send it to a second hand shop. And it just, I know it's a tiny little thing, but I really think it's an important thing. And from the responses to my last Sustainable Semstress video, I think a lot of you do too. So that is great. So let's get started. First of all, so I don't leave you in suspense, I am wearing a the very first top that I knitted, in fact, from a 1980s pattern that I like because it felt a bit retro. Probably not warm enough to be wearing it here, but I'm defiant and I'm not actually freezing, so that's good. Let's get started on my list of five fabulous scrap-busting, sustainability-minded Christmas presents that we can all make. I know my mum and dad are watching this, so you're going to be getting some of these things, so just be surprised when they turn up. <laughs> First of all, cotton dishcloths or face washes. The same pattern can be used for different purposes. And I'm lucky in that I have all of this cotton yarn left over and probably another half ball from the t-shirt that I'm currently knitting. So this is going to be turned into cotton dishcloths. And these are fabulous in two levels because, first of all, they're really lovely to use. And they are reusable, so instead of using a sponge and then throwing it out, the person who's receiving your lovely cotton dishcloth, not a ball of wool, you're going to have to turn it into something, uh, can use it, wash it, use it again, wash it, use it again. And it means sponges aren't being thrown out, and this lovely present is being used over and over again, and it's doing some little good in the world. Whether your giftee, that's my word for people who receive presents, giftee, whether they know it or not. So that is my first one, cotton dish gloss or cotton face washes. You, the person receiving it can do whatever they want with it, really. <laughs> but they probably shouldn't mix them up once they've started using them for a particular purpose. You may not have a giant ball of cotton yarn sitting around in your house, but it's possibly worth buying one or two or three or four if you don't get the giant Bendigo Woolen Mills ones because they are a fabulous, relatively quick project that you can whip up and give to someone when you need a quick present. Number two is pot holders. I do not have one with me, even though I've made some, but they are now living in other homes. Previously, I've made crocheted ones. Um, you sort of do two layers of really thick crochet and then join them together with a stitcher on the outside. But this year, I'm planning to make fabric ones, and that is so I can use up some fabric that I have in my scrap box and just because I think they're a fabulous idea and again they're going to be used and I'm going to choose my fabrics carefully for the people who are receiving them so hopefully they will want to put them on display in their kitchen and use them a lot. The only thing I've had to do with fabric pot holders, that's what I'm making, is I've had to buy insulated wadding uh, so people don't burn themselves when they use the pot holders. The crochet ones were so thick they didn't need any extra wadding, but the fabric ones obviously do. And if you're like me, you will have had to go out and buy that, which means you haven't been able to get everything from your stash, but I know I'm going to be using all of my insulated wadding to make pot holders, so I'm okay with that because I know they're going to be useful and I'm going to use every last bit of that insulated wadding. Even if I have to stitch it together at some points, it will be used. <laughs> And that is number two, pot holders, whether you crochet them or knit them or sew them. Fabulous idea for presents, great way to use up scraps, and they'll be useful as well. Number three is one of my favourite things to make, and that is little project bags, which are obviously fabulous for people who knit and crochet, but 
They are just cute little bags that can be used by anybody. They could be possibly used to put something special in when you're packing your luggage or you could keep a camera or a phone or something in your handbag if you want to keep it a bit protected. They can be used for whatever purpose you need a little bag for. And because they are interfaced, they sort of stand up like a little storage bucket anyway, so they have a bit of support to them. But they are so quick to make. They are very, very rewarding in many ways. Um, every time I make one and give one away, I really wish I didn't have to, because I want them all for myself. The good bit about this is that it is reversible, so you could have a stripy one instead of the crazy cat fabric one, but um, I prefer the case crazy cat fabric one because I like crazy cat fabric, just cats in general really. And the other good bit about it is that this is actually made in two parts, or it can be, so you can use heaps of scraps if you want to mix and match. I love making these and they are actually meant to be for socks so if you're knitting socks it will fit perfectly in here but you can fit a surprising amount of knitting and wool inside. I actually have at the moment two balls of wool in there and there's plenty of space. I could probably have about four really um, and it just ties up with a bit of drawstring or I have just used some ribbon here so Again, you can use a ribbon that you have in your stash. You could also make your own little bias binding drawstrings from scrap fabric. Use what you have available to you. Number three, project bags or little drawstring bag. Number four is covered coat hangers. I love covered coat hangers so much. I only have three and all of my favorite dresses go on those coat hangers because they're special coat hangers. So they're only reserved for my favorite garments. I have two types here. First of all is a crocheted one. I made these for people at work a couple of years ago. And again, just like the project bags, I hated giving away every last one because I wanted to keep them all for myself. When I was finally able to make one for myself, I was so excited. They're just so nice. And this is using a pattern from Molly Makes magazine. And they do, they do not have this pattern, but there is a similar pattern for making a crocheted coat hanger cover on their website which I will link to but oh, I love this this is just like a little wooden one that you you buy in a kit and put together and it's just so nice with the crochet on it it's so cozy I know my dresses probably don't care but I do the other one I have this was given to me just a, an ordinary coat hanger that's had some really cute fabric added and a bit of a bit of padding inside to give it some protection as well. This one also had a ribbon around here, but that was really annoying. It kept coming undone every time I took stuff off the hanger. It is another way you can use up all your little odds and ends as well. So you could add some ribbon if you had a little bit that would fit or add some lace and you can add it sort of around this way if you don't have enough to go the length of it. But you can get all your little bits and bobs that aren't enough for an entire project and add them to these lovely battered coat hangers. Oh, I love them so much. You can also, if you want to go extra fancy, add in some sort of scent or potpourri or something, a bit of lavender to keep the bugs away. If you think that your gifty would enjoy that, pop that in as well. And that just makes it extra, extra special. Number four, covered coat hangers for the win. Number five, I love because it works on two levels and it is reusable shopping bags. I do not have one to show you because again, I've given all of mine away, but I made them using this book here called The Perfect Handmade Bag, which I bought secondhand for about $2 and it is literally all about making bags from scraps and leftovers. Not only can you use up bits of fabric or old pillowcases or things from your scrap file, you're giving a bag to someone who can then use it in place of a single use bag or a plastic bag and and you're saving the world one tiny little bit at a time. So that's why I love this one so much because you get to use up scraps and you get to contribute to eliminating plastic bag waste in the world on a small scale. But if everyone did it on a small scale, that would make a big scale, right? So we can all do this. <laughs> Number five, reusable shopping bag is fantastic on so many levels. Yeah. Those are my five ideas for fabulous handmade gifts that also allow you to use up all the scraps. You can use them. For fabulous Christmas presents that people will love and that they'll be able to use. And that's what the sustainable seamstress is all about, making little changes that can hopefully make a big difference in the long run. I hope you enjoyed this or found it useful. If you have any other ideas for great presents that use up scraps, please pop into the comments and share them with everyone because I would love to know them and everyone else would love to learn from you as well. Now we can all make a start on our Christmas presents and we'll be ready in plenty of time and the best bit is you won't have to set foot in a shop at Christmas time. 
and that is the best present of all as far as I'm concerned. The day I decided to start making my Christmas presents instead of buying them was the best ever. It is fabulous. I hope you're all well, I hope everything is going swimmingly for you wherever you are. I know you're having a lot of fun knitting and sewing, although now you're probably knitting and sewing for other people instead of yourself. And I will catch up with you all again next week, so I will see you